All right. I am 100% calling cap on what's going on between Jerron Ennis and Brian Norman Jr. 100% without a doubt cap. As Brian Norman Sr. explains the offer that came from Eddie Hearn, Eddie Hearn also explained the offer that he made to Brian Norman Sr. And what are we left with? Exactly what we had before. Not a thing. Let's talk about that in this video. All right, welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Fanon. So, Eddie Hearn, the promoter of Jerron Ennis, promoter, by the way, that is doing kind of a shabby job with Jerron Ennis, said that he tried to make a fight with Brian Norman, the WBO welterweight champion that is promoted by Top Rank. Brian Norman gave a series. Brian Norman Sr. has given a series of interviews on YouTube. And in fact, I think he's been on every channel except for mine. I've listened to a couple of the interviews. I've listened to Eddie Hearn. And we what we have is the Bill Haney virus has infected, I do believe, every single solitary father in the boxing world. Because this whole conversation is 100% designed to make Brian Norman's name grow at the expense of Jerron Ennis. And that is after having paid close attention to what is going on. If y'all don't stop it, Brian Norman and Brian Norman Sr. do not have any real belief that they are going to be able to make a fight with Jerron Ennis. And Jerron Ennis's team had no real belief that they were going to be able to make a fight with Brian Norman Jr. And so what we've seen, and I'll get into the details, is nothing but a big publicity stunt taking place over the last couple of weeks. Now, who does the publicity stunt benefit? The publicity stunt benefits Brian Norman Jr., because Brian Jorman, Norman Jr. is a relatively unknown commodity in the boxing world, where Jerron Ennis is significantly well more well-known um, and is a champion in the same division. So peanut butter makes, make, you know, with chocolate makes Reese's peanut butter cups. I love Rena, Reese's peanut butter cups. So do a lot of other people. So they say, hey, man, this fight must be able to be made. No, 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 no. And how do I know that Brian Norman Sr. knows this? Because Brian Norman Sr. in an interview was very clear that money that he gets paid for a fight with Jerron Ennis in Matchroom that he is signed to Bob Arum and Bob Arum gets 20 to 25 percent off the top of whatever is done. That right there is going to make any fight that he is going to have, Brian Norman have, with Jerron Ennis, un, un, unprofitable for Brian Norman Jr. Because it is a 20 to 25% tax on the fight. Now, Brian Norman Jr. did get some numbers wrong, I do believe, in the interview that he gave in. And I did want to just say something. If you are paid um, $1.5 million, and you have your taxes on $1.5 million. You have to, out of that $1.5 million, you have to pay 20% of that $1.5 million to Bob Arum. 20, let's say 25% of 1.5 million, half of that is 750,000. Half of 750,000, let's just say 370 what's that 375 so you take 375 off the top of the 150 which leaves you at what 
1.125, something like that. So you're at 1.1. Then you pay 10% to your trainer. Now you're at one. Then you have to pay the sanctioned body 6% of your purse. So let's take 6% of the 1.5. That's 1.5 times three. That's 4.5 million. You get my point. All of those things are business expenses. And when you actually pay your taxes, it's not taxable income. When you pay, so Brian Norman saying that all of that, some of the stuff that he said, I thought was inaccurate, but the point still stood that, that Eddie Hearn was going to have to pay to get Bob Arum to let Brian Norman go. And there's one thing is the offer for the 20% that would pay the money. But the other thing that's not addressed is Bob Arum actually saying, yes, I'll do it. And more than likely, Bob Arum is not saying, yes, I'll do it. More than likely, what Bob is saying is, look, man, we've already got some other fights uh, taking place. And in fact, you're going to be on the undercard of the fight with Keyshawn Davis and uh, was it Lemos? Forget the guy that, that he's going to be fighting on that undercard. That date, I do believe that date is already set and everybody already knows is there. More than likely, Brian Norman and Brian Norman Sr. already knew they were going to be on this card. And why do I say that? Because this is what happened with this is what happened with Devin Haney. Devin Haney didn't do anything different than this. It's always a bunch of conversations about the contract negotiations heading into a date where a fight has already been made. In the, in this particular case, case Brian Norman is going to be on Keyshawn Davis's undercard. They probably already knew this. Also, Jer- Jerron Ennis already had a fight ordered for Karen Kukadajan by the IBF. If this was something that could take place, they needed to have... Um, Uh, Jerron Ennis would have needed to petition these guys to get out of that a while ago, but that's already done. It's already in motion. So that's why I say Brian Norman Sr. and not much different than than Floyd Schofield Sr., are doing what what Bill Haney did. Bill they and Bill Haney's um constantly being on YouTube channels, constantly um, talking about this guy's ducking or that guy's ducking, this guy's ducking, this is what we did in sparring, this is all three of these fathers, Bill Haney, Floyd Schofield Sr., and Brian Norman, and Brian Norman Sr., they're all doing the same thing. And I'm sorry, I'm not going for the banana in the tailpipe. I think that Brian Norman is a good fighter from what I've seen. But Brian Norman is not really ready for Jerron Ennis. He got the championship, but he they really weren't ready for that, right? They really weren't ready for it. Bob Arum gave him to Santillan, and they probably thought Santillan was going to beat Brian Norman Jr. But he gets the he gets the belt in. Hey, Bob Arum couldn't control Terrence Crawford leaving the weight class, so now he's got a now he's got a belt. But that doesn't mean that he was brought and developed and ready for the guy that has the IBF belt. So all in all, man, we're going to see how it goes, but I wouldn't hold my breath on that fight. And honestly, if the fight was made, I don't think that I would go for popcorn in the middle of that fight either. (laughs) Cause I, I just don't think Brian Roman is really ready for it. But anyway, that's my take on the matter. Please let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out deuces. 